Hi, it's Stuart McPhee here and uh, I'm really, really honoured and uh, privileged to be accompanied by Mark Cook, uh, for those who don't know, one of the market wizards profiled in uh, one of Jack Schwager's book, which is fantastic. We are in Australia, even though Mark's American and uh, he's been busily uh, preparing a lot of things and presenting to a lot of people, thousands of people in Australia over the last week. And I know you're here for another few days, Mark. So, And I know you're very busy, so thank you very much for taking the time um, to just talk with me for five, ten minutes. Um, just for those who don't know, which uh, is probably just two or three of you, Mark began trading a long time ago, back in 1977, and during your journey, journey, I guess, of discovering what worked and what didn't. He actually developed his own indicator, which as you said the other night, you humbly named uh, after, after yourself, myself. right? <laughs> uh, the Cook Cumulative Tick Indicator. Mm -hmm. um, uh, probably the, your biggest claim, I guess, the really thing that catapulted you into the trading world in everyone's eyes was winning the 1992 United States Investment Championship with a return of 563.8%. Mm -hmm. The following year you did it again, 322%. You must have had a pretty terrible year that year. Only yeah, it was. 322%. It, was a, it was a down year. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of us would like to have down years yeah, like that. There you go. Uh, look, because of all these, and uh, you know, certainly the performance and the championships really catapulted you. And because of that, you know, during that time, you've been in so many publications and magazines and journals, and been listened to by a lot of people around the world. And and probably the icing on the cake was being approached by Jack Schwager, who's very well known for his Market Wizards books. And he said, "I want you in my third book." He got you in the book, and. Uh, and that was terrific. So, uh, look, it's absolutely my pleasure to, to know you and have met you previously and to see you now in my own country here in Australia. I just had a few questions that I hope you could help uh, okay. uh, people with. Um, the first one, I guess, it's what we all tackle when we first start. Um, trading, did you start for the money? Is that the reason why you saw trading as an opportunity? Was it the money or was it something else that drove you to starting? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question, Stuart. I, I'm, I'm sure it was the money that enticed me to try it. Right. And then I think once I was in it, there, there was more than just the money to it. Mm. Um, I think it's a great challenge. Um, it, it's an adrenaline rush, and I always okay. say I'm an yeah. adrenaline junkie. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think initially, uh, when I looked at the look back on it, it, it was an obsession mm. and an addiction and all that. Wow. So, but addiction has a bad connotation. So you draw, you were really drawn into this as a real challenge. I thought I found it. I even knew in the early days when I lost money, right. was, this was for me. Wow. So I liked that. But yeah, yeah, of course the money, and I had no idea how much money could be made. I didn't know. I definitely didn't know how much money could be lost. Yes. So mm. you know, you look at it, but I, I, I think it, I think it's for everybody really mm. in, in varying. Uh, degrees, you know, how much time they have. Yeah, I, I heard you speak the other night. I think you made an interesting comment. You thought this was going to be the next biggest growth occupation, if you can call it that, mm -hmm. in the next, say, 10, 15 yeah, years. Yeah. You think this is really going to take off I, and I think a will. lot of people are going yeah. to take to this. I think a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of your clients too, are looking at this. It, it, the, it's growth exponentially, hmm. which means that I, I think there's going to be not only a lot more traders, but there's going to be a lot more traders of what I call influence, which is, you know, right uh, now... Influence on actual market yeah, itself and what right, it does. Right. Mm, okay. So you got a widespread uh, uh, type of person that's going to come into this hmm. and really can attract from every type of field, background, hmm. uh, capital, age, hmm. education. Hmm. Yep. So background, upbringing, yeah, all yeah, those things. All that, so. uh, you know, it's, I think one of the most ironic things about money is we, or the trading and the money, is we focus on the money because that's why we are drawn into right. trading for most right. of us. Yet that's the thing that makes us become unstuck right. because we worry about money so right. much and we focus right. on it. We don't want to cut losses and mm -hmm. cut losing trade. So it's a bit of a kick mm -hmm. that we are drawn in because of the money, yet that's the one thing right. that right. causes us to become unstuck. Right. As Paul yeah. Tudor Jones said in the first book, don't focus on making money, focus on protecting what you have. So mm -hmm. that's a real shift that mm -hmm. we're probably not aware of when we right. start about. Um, yeah. Okay, it's very interesting. Well, the other night I heard you speak and uh, you said something which really hit home with me. You talked about early on you were trading with some of your perhaps relatives or friends or your mother's mm -hmm. money and you lost a lot of it. Right. And there was an interesting thing that happened between yourself and your mom that had a defining yeah. uh, effect on you. Would you mind just yeah. explaining that? Well, my mother, she lost $100,000 that I was directly responsible for. And when we talked about it, and she asked how much money I had lost, mm. and I had lost $500,000 at that particular time. And so I, I looked at it, and she gave me words of inspiration instead of words of condemnation, which right. I think needs to go forward. Mm. And she asked how soon I thought I could get the money back, which I didn't think I was ever going to get back. 
And because of that, I had uh, installed in me an element of hope. So she put that, but also put it in perspective too. The next thing that she said to me, you know, when you were called me and you wanted to talk to me and you sounded like dire straits, she goes, I thought it was something really bad, like you had cancer. She said, losing money, you can get back. Mm -hmm. You're healthy, you can't. Mm -hmm. And it really put things into perspective of what it is, and it accords money really low on the On the priority the list, pole, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, do you think if she had not have said that, what she said about, okay, so when are you going to make it back, or how long will it take you to make it back? Do you think you were going down the path of, geez, this is a hard hit, mm -hmm. I don't think I can probably keep going, or well, I'm really going to struggle a little bit? I'm sure. She's always been an inspiration to me. She knows what to say at the right time. Okay. I don't know if she believed in that, but <laughs> what she said, <laughs> she obviously made worked. Me do it. <laughs> obviously worked then. Well, that's great. Okay, yeah. so that was probably one of the most defining moments. Oh, yes, and the definitely. other thing you said about the perspective, you know, we, I say to a lot of people, uh, you know, we have a, perhaps a, a few losing trades in a row. We may end up losing a thousand bucks over a week, which isn't a huge amount of money. But if it's done over three losing trades, you think it's not for you. This is a terrible run. You know, I say to people, if you have your health and your home and all these other things, and, we, and both of us live in great countries, mm -hmm. um, if losing a thousand bucks is the worst thing that's going to happen to you this week, Life's pretty good. That's you know, right. You know, no, is that it? Is that I the agree. worst thing that can happen? And I, I think perspective mm -hmm. is something we really right. don't uh, consider at all. Uh, a trading plan, is it overrated or do you need one? No, I think it's very much underrated because mm. the, the trading plan, when I won that 1992 U.S. Investing Championship in 91, I composed my first structured complete plan. Mm. And I really attribute uh, winning the 1992 to the plan that I composed going into that. And, and when I teach people in the mentoring and instruction, speaking, or whatever, I always allude to that because I guarantee whomever attempts it, even if they don't complete it and it's not as accurate or as detailed as it should be, mm. it will improve your trading, I think. Well, There's, no there question. Go. There's gold right there. The yeah. plans are not overrated oh, yeah. at all. They, no, you absolutely. Not at all. Uh, and it, does it, I think it comes down to that counterintuitive thing. You know, everything right. we need to do is counterintuitive. Right. We don't realize that. But mm -hmm. if you don't realize that and you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. you'll constantly make decisions intuitively, right. Right. won't you? Right. So I guess that plan is the thing that provides you the, mm -hmm. the guidance, I guess, to right. forget about the intuitive thing, actually just right. follow the plan. Right. Uh, exactly so, right. Okay, well, it's good to hear because I like to think I push the idea of a trading plan and mm -hmm. across. And I always say about the three M's, the mindset, the money, and the method. And right. Uh, right. which one of those is more important? I guess you could argue for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, obviously, managing your money is important and everything else. Um, do you think trading, a lot of people don't, uh, meet their expectations with trading. Is trading as difficult as a lot of people think it is? Is trading difficult, I guess, or is I, it easy? I think that's a good question, Stuart. I, again, you, you have to do a relativity on how tough it is. I do think it's very difficult, mm. but I think it's very rewarding. Mm. So anything that's very rewarding probably needs to be difficult. If it was too easy, you wouldn't feel it was as no, sure. rewarding. Mm. So, uh, But uh, monetarily, I think the upside potential for it is astonishing mm. in the limitation that people have is their mind, not their pocketbook, basically, <laughs> because to um, be honest with you, the amount of money I've made over my 32 years has astonished me mm. because I never thought I'd ever make that much money over that period of time. And the interesting thing is you probably don't do it for the money anymore, do you? Oh, the trading, no. it's just no, really routine, don't. it's process, it's something it's you enjoy. It's become part of me. It's become part of me, Stuart. And, and because of that, I do it for the fun and go from there. But, but you need really to be hungry to keep an edge. And perhaps I don't have that as much as I once did. Hmm. But someone that's your age, for example, I started my trading company when I was 34 years of age. Mm. And I had goals of what I needed to attain. Mm. And I exceeded all the goals. But I was hungry back then. I, hmm. I needed to make X amount because of my family and hmm. other obligations and things like that. Not to say I'm coasting now because, because I enjoy the trading. Okay. It, it, it's, it's fun to me. It, it's fulfilling to me. It's completed me. But do I have to do it each and every day? No. But I want to do it each and every day? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, you absolutely love it. Yeah. Right, right. That's terrific. I, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people in this world who don't do what they want to do. No. So far as enjoy, right, and go to right. work every day and actually don't enjoy it. And I think mm -hmm. trading provides uh, all those things about, you know, the, the working for yourself and from right. the home and flexible right. hours and no boss and all those things. And I guess that coming with the money, you think, yeah. wow, this is just the perfect yeah. occupation. Why didn't I do this earlier no, no, or, right. or take it on and, yeah. and everything else?